Hey, it's Alex, and welcome to my look at Gordian Quest, which has been sponsored by the team at Mix Realms. It's always the best when you can take a sponsored gig, and the game you never played before turns out to be surprisingly awesome anyways. If you like raw, nitty-gritty RPG depth like I do, and systems on top of systems synergizing with other systems and mechanics, well, you might want to give this a look. By the way, if you do, I have a link at the top of the video description to go grab it right now on Steam. The game just got a massive update, adding its third act to the campaign mode, taking you into the Faded Peaks, where you'll find new heroes, NPCs, quests, and other new gameplay elements. There are 40 new legendary items to seek out, runes that can be upgraded to higher tiers, and the AI has gotten an improvement overall as well. Instead of traditional RPG adventuring, you can also try to make it through the game's roguelite mode, which got updated with new boss fights, and its intimidating endless mode added online leaderboards you can try to climb. Good luck. The list goes on. They also added a whole entirely new PvP mode, where you can take your assembled deck online to try to beat out everyone else's. That's honestly quite the gigantic one update, but that's just what's new, not even close to everything that's in this. So for this next part, I'm going to kick it over to myself and my experience trying to survive my way through Act 3 of the campaign, and explain how everything plays. Alright, so here is my Act 3 campaign. Let's take a look at what I got going here. Here's my Druid. She's kind of a frontline damage dealer, also some focus on bleed. Bleed's a little different in this game, it doesn't do degen, it actually makes the enemy take more physical damage. Uh, this guy's my Blood Mage, he is also bleed focused, that's kind of my whole synergy here is mostly at bleed. And then I have a Enforcer, she's kind of built out like a Paladin, a uh, combination of melee damage, guards, and heals. There's a formation system, I have two people on the front row and one dude on the back row. The front row people get hit first by melee damage, and the back row get hit first by range damage. So if that backline guy is kind of in trouble with a bunch of ranged units, I can shift him to the middle. Now before we start this battle and get into combat, I want to talk about skill trees. I'm a big fan of skill trees, and this might have one of my favorite systems ever. So you just start out with this one square, but once you spend enough skill points, you get to manually place down your next one. Now these are all the different card types for this character. And say, for example, you want Holy Warrior 2 here. You have to actually make note of where it is on the grid. So it's in the top left. So we want to place that somewhere where we can easily get that next. So we don't have to spend more skill points. Say if we put it here, we have to spend like four skill points to get it. If we put it here, the next time we have another skill point, I don't have any at the moment, we can immediately get that. Now what you're actually earning here in the skill trees are either statistical improvements for your character upgrades to your cards, modifications to your cards, new cards in general, or there's also this entire talent system. This relies on your strength, dexterity, or intelligence stat, depending on how high of a tier you can distribute these. But there's all kinds of stuff in here. But that's a basic overview of the skill grid system. It's good. Alright, so first off, your cards either take AP or SP. AP is the circle with the 1 right here. We have 4 out of 4 down on the bottom left. Or they take SP, which is earned by playing cards. You can see that under your actual character. This guy has 1 charge, so I could play this if I wanted to. So one of my frontliners took a big hit here, so we have to be careful. Now, if you want to see what the enemy is going to do next, you have to highlight underneath their health bar. That's going to show their next action actually update on that. I just figured out you can highlight the characters on the timeline here and see what they're going to play next as well. That might be a little easier. As you can see under the two, this shows the range. The X is you, the dots are where it hits on the grid over here. So we're going to try to move her out of the way of this next hit and also line us up for uh, mend, which heals anybody adjacent to me. Let's go ahead and see if that cancels that out. Yeah, see, he's just going to hit straight forward and hit nobody. Sorry, bud. And victory. All right, let's put that skill point to use. We can get that holy warrior we placed before. It's going to have us draw random cards from that deck. Now, what do I want? Let's take that one. I have found myself against this big old guy, but he is dropping coins. I need to try to get those. I need that money. Let's 
destroyed. Ooh, here we go. Primal Aspect. Such a cool card. Bear Mode. You have a whole different deck of cards in it. Bear Mode. They're pretty darn strong. I have found myself in an exploration spot, so I'll show off what's going on here. Now you move around. These cost these flags at the bottom. And you want to avoid these enemies. If you go into their sphere, you will take team damage. The little icons, like there's a treasure chest that offers a random currency item. Each of these offer a different thing if you try to move to them. I want to try to avoid the enemies, obviously, so if I move one at a time, I should be able to see where they're going and avoid them. Got a big payout of stuff. Alright, so in here is like a little mini dungeon. I'm actually going to go down a floor. We're just trying to make it through here. I don't want to do all the optional fights. Oh, it looks like we have a boss fight. I'm going to go back to town first. Let's go back to town and then we'll close this out taking on the big boy. So here we are in town. There's a ton of stuff to do in town. There's a quartermaster you can buy at different party members. You can go on random explorations. There's a merchant. You can gamble at the merchant. I don't have any of his coins to spend, sadly. Uh, there is a place where you can fuse gems. There's a jeweler where you can socket gems, buy stuff. Blacksmith. You can also salvage things. There's also a healer. Now we have some negative effects on our party members, so we need to get rid of those. There's also the Enchantress down here. She sells some stuff, and you can also enchant items. I do need to make sure I have plenty of supplies. If you move on the map without having any supplies, you do get negative effects on your teammates. Alright, boss time. Let's see if we can survive. So as you see here on this map, there's actually four lanes. Sometimes there's two lanes, sometimes there's three, sometimes there's four. Depends on the map. So many stacks of bleed. 37. I'm doing work on this guy. Time to die. Alright, that seems like a good spot to wrap this one up. That was Gordian Quest, which is in early access, but it's coming along quite nicely. Uh, special thanks to Mixed Realms for sponsoring this video. Go use that link down in the description to pick this up. One of our party members just died in the outro. That sucks. But thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.